Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It's another Monday video uh, for Theo Trade, uh, July 31st, what, 2023, the last day of July. And uh, boy, you guys missed a good one today. Uh, Don does his monthly uh, Ultima QA call uh, webinar where he just fields literally dozens of questions. He answers them all and are really talking about the current market and why these are ripe conditions for selling premium, especially at this point. And as we look at uh, Microsoft, is Microsoft the canary in the market? Just say AI. And I realize that's a play on words. I, yes, or AI. We've got Apple and Amazon on the docket this week on the third after the market close. Uh, how many times do the word count? Do they say, especially Apple, AI um, in their announcement? And what is the net effect on the stock on the earnings? We'll see. So we're going to talk Amazon. We're going to talk Microsoft today particularly the negative revisions and the potential of where Microsoft may be going in the next leg and what that means for the broader market, as well as look at stocks like Affirm Holdings, First Solar, Uber, uh, Tempur-Pedic, uh, Ethan Allen, uh, Arc, X, Fubo, just to name a few. All right, let's get rolling here. So the S&B basically finished unched on the session. Now, as we look at last week, you saw a very defined range develop based on 30s gap, and then closing of that gap, it was a very large candle. Uh, range was 789 on the SPY, was well over you know one and a half percent, close to two percent, but one and a half ish, one and three quarters. But this really created kind of a defined range for the SPY. And notice the last two sessions, we've just been wandering in the shadow of that day, and this creates significant levels around 460 down here around 451. If we break up or if we break down, it could be a key indication of where we we what the next leg of the market will be. And uh, I mentioned we'll talk about Microsoft here, but uh, but if we look at Microsoft today, notice where we're at. We're back against support now. If you look at where we finished on the high side at, uh, just before its earnings, about a week before we hit about 366, 367. If I click on the drawing tool here, click on the high and go down to the low from a couple of days ago, that's 10 and a third percent. We're currently down about eight and a half percent, but that's a 10% reversal from highs for Microsoft. And when you consider the bigger picture, that's just the last couple of weeks. Look at the last three weeks here. Um, XLK, if you notice this is ranked by performance, up only 3% in the last three weeks. But look at the last six weeks. If we look at XLK, which is technology, of which, you know, again, Microsoft, um, Apple are a big part of. Technology is only up 2%. This is the bottom five sectors out of 11 and underperforming the S&P rather considerably in the last six weeks. So when you think about this, is technology the leader that it was? Again, sometimes we continue to give credit where credit is not oftentimes due and looking at Microsoft and the significant negative revisions, it certainly calls into question where the market's going to go in the future, right? In the coming weeks. Now, we do have two mega cap stocks this week in Apple and Amazon that may have something to say. But look at Apple's performance, for example, over the last several weeks. Go back to June 30th. We're not up a whole lot after that really significant run, huge jump on the 30th of June. We've really eked out very minimal gains ever since, only up about 1.2%, which again, kind of reflects what we saw over here regarding XLK. Now, certainly stocks like NVIDIA have certainly defied logic to some degree, but let's go back to that June 30th point, right about right here. And again, this is up how much? Uh, today on the close, we're up about 14%. So this is the outlier. Google and its earnings last week, really kind of offsetting some of what happened in Microsoft in the reversal there. Google has certainly produced positive returns since that June 30th low. But the question is, if we start to turn, these stocks that have seemingly relatively overvalued, can they continue to go at this clip? The answer is probably not. And the earnings, although maybe positively revised, or in this case, Google beating estimates, certainly don't provide the, you know, the, the, the underpinnings for a major market rally in Google Although, again, we're still off of our highs from 2021, which is not the case if we look at Microsoft here, which is at the highs from 2021. 
So a lot of stuff is going to develop this week. We've got jobs, numbers, et cetera. But the realities of tech are that what? We may have run our course, and Apple is a major part of that. When we look at Apple, we look at the defined or the range that developed last Thursday, we can create kind of a standard here that says, look, you know, if Apple breaks through the high here, we're probably looking to roll higher. However, if we take out the low, which is around 329.05 from last Thursday, this may be an indication of a major reversal or trend change for Microsoft. And is Microsoft the canary in the coal mine, in the Bears coal mine, signaling weakness? And so, again, what we've seen is that technology has been knocked off track, which frankly, you know, kind of makes sense. Look at the last three weeks' performance here. You'll notice financials are up, up today through a third of a percent, up nearly 5% in the last three weeks. Look at the run in financials. How do we make sense of this? Whereas, you know, technology is kind of falling by the wayside a little bit and financials are reemerging after a major sell-off from last March. This is a two-part process. Number one is the fact that, look, they are more oversold. But number two, what the Fed has articulated is what? They think the economy is improving. They are now on hold in terms of raising short-term rates. We can use IRX as an indicator for short-term rates. We're about five and a quarter percent right now on 13-week treasury bills. If this is the Fed's swan song in terms of the rate increase last week, what does this mean going forward? In particular for longer-term treasury yields, uh, the 10-year currently stands at 4%. If they are in fact correct, right, they've backed off the recessionary pr predictions. If they are correct and all of a sudden we start to see a normal, a more of a growth-oriented economy in the near future, Shouldn't 10 year treasury yields as inflation expectations begin to pick up for 10 years based on growth expectations? Shouldn't the 10 year release and start to trade higher? Well, we look at what happened on the July 27th, last Thursday, and correlate that back to the SP 500 and the issues that it had. Certainly, there was news from Japan in terms of their yield curve control measures, trying to keep Japanese government bonds at or below a certain yield. They've kind of opened that up a little bit and immediately trading to their to their uh, standard. We are at risk if long-term treasuries begin to rise. And yet, that's exactly why, in my opinion, why we've been seeing strength of late in financials. And in particular, if we look at regional banks, which will benefit by rising long-term treasury yields. So if we start to see a flattening of the yield curve where the 10-year is rising towards short-term rates, where the 30-year, the five-year, and we start to see a convergence, a bull flattening of the yield curve from being inverted, this is good for banks in terms of being able to lend and potentially make more of a profit or have better margins in the future. And so what's happening right now, financials are, are moving in accordance with that, and it's ultimately hurting financials. As the interest rates continue to rise, in particular, the back end of the curve starts to rise, longer dated uh, uh, maturities begin to potentially rise. All of a sudden, as technology starts to roll, it's dead into higher, a higher yield environment, no longer benefiting by raising and borrowing money a couple of years ago and, and putting it on the sideline and making a nice spread. We're going to start to see interest costs begin to rise in the future. And this is ultimately going to crimp some of the appreciation we're seeing in technology. But let's be honest, the movement of financials is relatively limited in that are we going to see a real normal yield curve with the Fed funds rate of five and a quarter, five and a half percent? That's going to be really hard, to, to hard sledding to do. But on the margin, it may improve. But at the consequence, we're going to start to see some negativity in some areas of the market. The one area that I've been bullish on for the last couple of months is energy and in particular, refining companies like a Valero, for example, an MPC or PSX, um, these have certainly run their course. And like Domino's, companies like AR finally broke out last week, which we saw significant option activity off of the lows down here. So energy continues to move as oil prices continue to rise today up nearly 1.6%. And when you look at the product depth, you'll notice Oil is in backwardation. This is a bullish condition as back month prices begin to rise towards the spot price, which right now is about $81.50, $82. We're seeing front bias on this. And if you look down here, some of the top performers today, Chevron and Exxon up nearly 3% in 
catching a bid. Looking at potential near-term targets, upwards of 117 to 120 um, in these products. I can take this off. That's an old one. Same with that one, I guess, too. But, uh, but again, we look at even the retracement levels off of these points. Again, energy poised to continue to rise. And this is one of the areas that I've remained relatively bullish on. But we start to break out of this range. We're looking at 112, 113. We break that area. We're looking at going back to 120. So a reasonable opportunity with Exxon back near support, looking at 120 as a target in the coming weeks. That's one of the areas you just don't expect to see a lot of cooling off. However, um, it's not the only one, right? When we start to see if we're kind of going off to this soft landing scenario and we're backing off the recession, um, you're probably going to see some strength in uh, metals companies, like, for example, in FCX. Copper today making a breakout, uh, finishing the highest in, a, in a several months. This is certainly bullish for FCX, which mines a bunch of metals, but copper is one of the biggest parts of their portfolio. Uh, gold today catching a bid, although backing off, showing some dollar weakness. So while the S&P is up 0.2%, um, notice that uh, the dollar in gold terms backing is, is backing off about 0.27, gold up 0.27%. So we could basically explain away all the today's gains in the market due to dollar weakness. And so we might be seeing shaping up right now after the Fed statement next week in the near term, as long as we continue to hold on to this notion of a soft landing and we back off the recessionary posture, energy and materials may be likely to lead. And we looked at a few stocks in that mix that may do it. And uh, obviously a part and parcel to this is a weaker dollar in gold terms and in relative terms. And so we've seen recently the dollar strengthen quite a bit. but We may see this kind of back off and could hold the market up as energy financials, and materials continue to lead out. And again, that's all posture based upon the idea that we're setting aside the notion of recession, and we may see dollar weakness, gold strength in the near term, and that will bleed across energy, materials, and then again, rising interest rates due to inflation concerns would certainly help financials as they borrow short and lend long. Borrow at a, a, a higher rate and lend at a much maybe a more improved rate if yields continue to rise on the 10 year as a as a benchmark for it. Um, however, as we look at this, I mean AFRM, right? This is a high short interest stock finishing near the high of the session. I mean, we're still seeing um the 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 going after companies that have high short interest uh, coupled with unusual option activity. A uh, firm's had a number of trades that's really yet to really break out and experience a major squeeze. But it's possible, right? Uh, this is a weekly expiration for for August out here at the uh, the nineteen dollars strike price. You can see it kind of filtering out here, but mostly bought. And again, this helps create conditions that if the price begins to move, it creates a gamma squeeze, which creates a short squeeze, which creates a further gamma squeeze. That's what we call, folks, a positive feedback loop. And we've seen a number of these over the last while. Lastly, week we looked at uh, IQ, which had a major move on Friday. Uh, we looked at stocks like Baba. Uh, we looked at stocks like uh, XPEV, for example, last Monday in my video. Massive moves in the last week uh, centered on China. And, of course, we looked at KWeb as the ETF, um, uh, e-commerce ETF. So we see here a big move over last week in KWeb as well. FXI started coming on Friday. Um, but, uh, but, again, major moves last week were Chinese companies, and that was a major focus for our for the for the video I did last Monday, and again also energy and metals, Schlumberger may be on the on the on the brink of making a move here as well as an oil service stock. Uh, this is one that Blake and I highlighted in our uh, video. Sorry, in our uh, at the close. Uh, no, it's actually a joint session we did on a Monday on the seventh, I believe. And it was it was earlier. It was on the third. Yeah, it was a little bit before. It's before the breakout. Sorry, it was on the third. Then it broke out on the seventh. And again, a lot of this is based on unusual option activity coupled with sector rotation expectations or short interest or both in some of these names. Now, again, Affirm Holdings is one of those stocks that kind of fits the bill here and had a really strong move. So again, if this were to break, what could we look at? Well, if you look at the range from about 13 to about 19 and a half, um, again, we're talking what, about six and a half dollars on the break, 25, 26 hip here could be reasonable. But you look at past short squeezes, They've been pretty large at times. So again, could we get a 40 handle? 
Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. But again, look at the pricing of these verticals on the out of the money options. Let's just go out 18 days. The positive skew out here allows you to construct a rather cheap vertical spread, buying the lower strike, selling the higher strike. And again, you can, you can decide how much you want to spend. The less you spend, the less likely you make money. But if all of a sudden you have a blowout, a gap, I'm sorry, jump in the price, a la previous uh, short squeezes, 30 bucks, 25, 30, you can construct whatever you want. The further you go, the less of the probability, but better the reward risk. But there is, because of the skew, rising vol structure out here, this creates an edge out here on a firm holdings. And of course, this works for stocks like Roku as well, uh, which today, big, big move. is a little bit lower in my session earlier this morning as we looked at it. This was a 95 strike. We're basically sitting at 95 right now, but it's a high short interest company, right? Can we experience a short squeeze? Absolutely. So the point is with these companies is that if you have adequate liquidity, right, and you have a rising out-of-the-money call volatility structure, you can construct spreads, right, buying the lower strike, selling the higher strike, that would capitalize on a further upward move. And again, this is not a high probability trade, but could Roku end up at 115, 120, 150, right? You just don't know where the short squeezes will carry you. But again, you can go shorter amounts of time, go closer to the stock price. You probably want to see at least a two and a half or three to one reward to risk ratio if you're buying the lower strike and selling the higher strike out here, which is, again, benefiting from the vol structure to be able to, to set up something like this. But again, this is an area right now already broke out. But again, as we know, these short squeezes can create much bigger moves. And if you're trying to speculate, that's the way to consider doing it. Um, another one is uh, Uber. This is taking the other side of it. Well, let's go over another short squeeze talk. Fubo. We'll, we'll wrap up with Fubo here on the short squeeze talk. Fubo's making a major move today. Earnings are coming up. And for Fubo, um, this was uh, 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 AUG $355. So we're seeing here buying the $350, selling the $5 strike price. Again, it's a really cheap spread. You pay like you know 43 cents there. You sell this for 13 or 14 cents. You're into it for 30, 31 cents. Again, relatively small cost. You got 70 cents of upside if you're right. So is it quite three to one? No, it's closer to two and a half to one. Uh, sorry, it's five and a half out here. Sorry, it's five. Yeah, three and a half. Sorry, three and a half and five. It's a buck 50 spread. Sorry, <laughs> costing you uh, about uh, 28 cents. God, I can't get the math right here. Costing you about 28 cents on a dollar 50 wide spread. So you risk 250 with the possibility of making a dollar 22. Okay, so we got a very solid reward to risk. If $5 is up here, but guess what? This stock has done it before. Doesn't mean it's going to happen this time, but we're seeing option activity, maybe with expectation that that could happen this week. They announced on the third or fourth before the market closed. So again, some opportunity, but we may see a pre run here. And if you can see that push into four above $4 does give you a chance of potentially closing as we push towards five this week, even potentially before the earnings. But again, you see the positive all vol skew benefiting these trades so it makes them cheap to speculate so if you're adding some bearish trades like potentially an uber guess what you've got the downside potential major move higher dip 2.74 percent do you take a swing lower in anticipation maybe the market's a bit overbought today well a bit overbought condition generally speaking uh this was an august expiration at the 48 strike so not far out of the money but you see we're seeing adding uh, more interest out here, 42 is an example. So it's adding interest in here on the put side. Again, what if we crack open the downside in Uber? This may set up relatively well. Even if you want to give yourself a little bit more time, maybe out to like a September, um, you could buy a 5250 and sell a 4750. Um, that's going to cost you about 280. You know, if you can get it for close to 255, 260, it may be worthwhile. Otherwise, you could look at like a 50, 47 and a half. It's probably going to cost you closer to buck 20. But the idea is if you can get about a one to one ratio, um, the volatility, we start to get a little more beneficial is to get out here just a little bit like a 47, 50, 45. You see that's lower and that's higher. I want to buy this and sell that. That's higher. So we could do a 47, 50, 45, just looking for a bit of a breakdown here by September. So you have plenty of time for something to happen. Yes, you may run away. Yeah, you can always take max loss. But again, this is basically set up for what? In case the market breaks down. So you can kind of sprinkle in stuff that is a low probability, the upside, and a little bit more moderate probability to the downside. 
uh, like, for example, uh, um, an Uber, which if it breaks, you know, we could reasonably see this uh, pull back to you know, 4250, maybe 3750. This would be a reasonable correction, even if you're bullish in the long term. Similarly, we saw back here, for example, pull back, test the 61%, and then we ran again. So 61% is 3750 right now. All right. So again, this is poise after a major move. Then we start to see as we look at uh, home building, right? What's happening with regards to the desire to buy stuff to fill your home with? Uh, Temper Sealy, earnings have not announced. We did recover off the lows, which is good if you're looking to go bearish. Uh, because again, earnings can create the downside potential. It's on the third. Uh, but again, today uh, on Temper Pedic, this was an AUG 40. And again, the idea is that on earnings, could we see a breakdown? And as you look at the volatility, now again, the, 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 the liquidity here is a little bit off, but you know, could you buy a 4250 and sell a 40? It might cost you about you know, 45, 55 cents ish. Uh, but again, if we get to 40, uh, you know, again, that's a $5 spread, 55 cent cost, low risk, high reward, low probability. But you start to just get even in the money, right? Sorry, 4250, 40. Uh, just get a little bit in the money here, 40, 40 bucks, $42 rather, approximately your break even on a trade like this. So you don't have to go down a lot to kind of break even here, but you need it to go down because it is an out of the money spread. But one way to play the downside in TPX. And as we look at earnings coming up for Ethan Allen, um, this is not an easy one to trade. You might use Home Depot as a proxy. But this has made a really nice run. They do have earnings coming up on the, uh, in this case, the second after the market close. But there was a 30-25 spread put on today, uh, basically buying 2,500 contracts at 30, selling double the contracts at 25, helping to pay for the 30. And so, again, it reduces the cost, but you don't want it to go below 25. I wouldn't suggest this kind of ratio spread where you get 2,500 naked puts unless you really wanted to buy uh, E-Trade, sorry, sorry, Ethan Allen at, uh, at the 25 strike. You could sell buy one here and sell two there. Uh, but again, is this really the position you want to be in? Or otherwise, you take this as a bearish indication. Probably aren't trading options on this stock because there's very little open interest, even though we're going to build some here, but it's really one player in those option contracts. So you could use something like Home Depot as a proxy, right, of just um, furniture or, or you know, home improvement, et cetera, as a proxy. And you can look at the downside here as an in-out spread. This could be a reasonable setup, even for 18 days out, uh, buying the 335 and selling the 330, $5 spread, buying the 332, selling the 330 if you want to add and out of the money to reduce cost and increase reward. So this is set up pretty nicely for a bearish move and a pullback in the next 18 days or give yourself longer, go out 45 days. But this is a pretty reasonable setup. And again, given some of the bearish turn in some of these Stocks like Tempur-Pedic, mattresses, obviously, and Ethan Allen Interiors, those are some of these bearish expectations building. Now, we talked about uh, you know a lot of these high short interest stocks in tech. Um, ARC Innovation is certainly invested in a lot of these companies. It's rallied back up to resistance today, up nearly 2%. But you know in the fray or in the background of this stock on ARCX, you're seeing a December. It's out there a little ways. You'd probably go shorter. But bearish activity out here. Uh, 22,000 contracts at the 40, which aligns with what? Kind of aligns with scenario of support back here, for example. Um, but just, just you know, you can go closer strike prices, less time. You could set this up as like an in-out spread 46 days out. You know, buying the 51, selling the 50. Buying the 51, selling the 49, right? You can construct a spread. You probably wouldn't want to pay more than half of the spread difference between the strike prices. But the idea is you can construct a spread here around the at-the-money just need a little pullback here, 47. You could probably close that out pretty quickly for 30 to 55% in the next three days or, or out uh, going, going longer, closer to 18. Uh, we'll kind of wrap it up with a, a metal stock. We talked about metals and FCX. What about a steel producer? You know, this is kind of along the lines of Alcoa, which had some bullish activity yet last week, up 4% today. But what about steel? So again, the idea being is that if we see commodities prices increase. This may possibly help in industrials, but certainly does generally help metals, companies specifically, energy, that kind of stuff. So we look at X. We're at resistance today, looking for a breakout. They've already announced earnings. And we saw today was this week's expiration at 2650. So we create kind of a gamma level at 2650. 
And again, kind of fits the bill. If the dollar weakens, gold strengthens, for example, metals generally strengthen. This may help U.S. steel, which does buy iron ore and then, then processes it and sells it as, as materials. This may help XLB continue its leadership today, which was up a half a percent. Companies like U.S. Steel, Alcoa, FCX, et cetera, may help provide that boost. So a lot of a, a very busy week coming up this week. Again, a lot to look out for. Um, but I'm telling you, this is, uh, you know, again, could Microsoft be the canary in the coal mine? And I'm kind of borrowing that from Don. He messaged me earlier today. But um, but the idea is, is Microsoft's weakness an indication of potentially future weakness in the market? Or can uh, Apple say AI enough in its earnings announcement and improve its guidance enough to help hold up the market and Amazon as well? But uh, I'm going to say, you know, Microsoft, the canary in the coal mine, I'm going to say yes or I on that one. Anyway, have a great one. We'll see you back next.